Are you ready for the ultimate bikepacking weekend adventure? Join us for an unforgettable self-supported bikepacking trip through Southwest Virginia. The Grayson Gravel Pie Bikepacking Adventure travels along the Virginia Creeper Trail, the beautiful gravel roads of Grayson County, Virginia, and the New River Trail. All lodging and camping arrangements are included, along with daily routes and guides riding along with you. This self-supported adventure offers resupply opportunities every 20 miles for your food and water needs. Find out more at GravelTravelDirt.com. You're listening to Mid-Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt. Hi everybody, this is Brian, and this is episode 172 of Mid-Atlantic Gravel, Travel, and Dirt. Now, if you're new here, this is the podcast where we talk about gravel bikes, adventure biking, bike packing, bike camping, or just playing bikes. And tonight, I am flying solo. COVID has struck the family, as well as our guests that we had scheduled for this week. So everyone out there, stay safe and healthy, so you can ride hard and fast or slow and easy. Choice is yours. Before we get into the episode, though, I want to tell you about Cutaway USA. Cutaway USA offers premium cycling apparel born in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Cutaway is an industry leader using innovative fabrics combined with clean, bold designs. Make sure to visit their website at cutawayusa.com to see all their premium cycling apparel and gear. And when you reach the checkout, use the code GTD20 to take 20% off your entire order. Before I get into all the nonsense I'm going to talk about with myself this week, I've got some thank yous and some shout outs to some new Patreon family members. Welcome Adam Diem from Roughneck Gravel Roubaix and Eric Schoonover. Those are our recent additions on the Patreon side. And if you didn't hear the episode of few weeks ago, we had actually had Adam on. He is the race director for Roughneck Gravel Roubaix. Also want to send a really special thank you to Nadine for her PayPal donation. We will make that go a long way towards keeping the wheels turning over here. i uh, just going to do a little bit of catch up so kind of across the board. First up, uh, Gravel Grinder Nationals were May 7th. And we had scheduled Alex and Chris from Dirty Kitten Productions this week to talk not only about Grinder Nationals, but also about Growly Cat, both of which just happened, and their upcoming Dirty Kitten Gravel Race. But we are going to have them on a future episode really soon. Now, I went out on May 7th in the cold, in the rain, in the misery to ride grinder nationals i went out the night before so i stayed in leesburg i'm just so tired of all of these early morning ride drives to go to a ride that just decided that you know let's bag it i'm going to go to leesburg um spend the night there which was the really the right call um leesburg is a cool little town if you've not been or spent any time there i would i'd recommend it it's really a cool little place the venue was outside of Leesburg at Bluemont Station. That was a great choice. I'm not sure who found that or made that choice. That was a question I had for Alex and Chris. Um, but it was like a really cool little brewery, winery kind of event venue. I, I thought in, in my mind, you know, when I pictured Loudoun County and the, the starting venue for an event like that, that was it. I mean... Spot on, perfect location, and and then going out from there, Chris, you did an amazing job with the course. Spot on, it was an absolutely gorgeous course, and it was. I, I told you when I saw you out on the course, it is so well marked. You did a great job with that. If if you got lost or you got turned around, it's because you weren't paying attention to your Garmin or you weren't paying attention to the signage or something, um, because. There was no doubt as to where you're supposed to go. So uh, kudos, Chris. Great job. The The story of that weekend, though, was obviously the weather. Uh, it was rainy. It was cold. It was rainy. <laughs> it was cold. <laughs> I think you probably say that over and over several times. Um, it, it just, 
I, I get it. You know, we, we talk a lot about how the weather can make an event or make something really seem epic. And you're going to hold on to that memory longer. And this is, was one of those, those times, but sometimes it just kind of gets the better of you. I, I had one of those kind of days. And so I called it a day at 53 miles instead of taking that separate second lap. Um, I headed back to get warmed up. It, it was really hard when you do a lap on a course like that. And, and the day is that kind of a day. It's just so easy to kind of say, yeah, nah, I'm, I'm thinking today is a day that I'm just going to call it. And even, even into like mile 40, 45, um, I really wasn't, I didn't have any doubt that I was going to do the, the full century. I just, it never really entered my mind until I kind of got to that turn and kind of just thought to myself, it's like, you know, the back hurts, it's cold. And the cold really did, um, beat me up a little bit. Uh, on a cool little side note, I had the opportunity to ride for a little while also alongside of, uh, Gretna Bill from Lupine Lights. And we chatted about bike podcast. Bill is a, a bike podcaster as well. And it was kind of nice to kind of ride along and chat with a fellow bike podcaster just by chance, not really, you know, having something planned or kind of a sit down or something like that. It was just, it was just kind of like very, I don't know, it's authentic and kind of like really just a nice opportunity to kind of ride along with somebody that um, does, does the same thing that you do. It was kind of neat. The uh, men's winner for the event was Paul Petrie from Alexandria, Virginia. He had a time of five hours and 11 minutes and 52 seconds. Well done. What an effort in those conditions. Now, that would have been... Now, it was over 100 miles. I had uh, 3,600 feet of elevation on my one lap. So, you know, that's 100 miles with seven, seven, that, seven, over 7,000 feet of elevation. And the women's winner was not far behind. Catherine Sarkisov from North Potomac with a time of 5 hours, 23 minutes, and 20 second, 26 seconds. Uh, hats off to both of y'all. That... That's a ridiculously solid, solid effort. Congratulations. Um, again, kudos on a tough course. I I can't say enough about that course. It was just, I mean, Loudoun is a special place and the gravel is really, it's just what it should be. And I, I hope that America's Roads is able to really, pardon the pun, make some inroads into saving that gravel as much as possible because every time you go out there you see new fresh hard top on places that you know used to be gravel so and they're just slowly slowly disappearing and and i just i hate to see that happen uh some interesting news from our guest from our last episode cynthia frazier cynthia went out and did it again uh last week if you listen to the episode, we talked about her Rockstar 250 gravel routes, fastest known time effort. Well, just last week, she went out and claimed the fastest known time for the Pave route. That was 166 miles over 12,000 feet of elevation. Um, so that paved route, what they call the Pave route, is... I think it's got a little bit of loose stuff on it, but for the most part, I, I think it is hard top. Uh, she pulled that effort off in nine hours and 25 minutes total time with only 13 minutes of stop time. Now, for those of you quick with math, not me, that's just over 18 miles per hour moving average for 166 miles and 12,000 feet of elevation. <laughs> I kudos Cynthia. I seriously kudos. Along the way, I looked at her her Strava um, effort for that, and so along the way, she racked up seven Strava QOMs, and I literally lost count of the segment trophies. Looking at the Strava route, if you don't follow Cynthia on Instagram, you really should. Search for Watt underscore wagon. Watts is in power watt. So it's W A T T underscore wagon. Drop her a follow. I'm going to put a, another link 
to uh, her Instagram in the show notes. And here's some of her additional ride by the numbers. Uh, normalized power, 191. Six bottles of water. Four bottles of Tailwind. Three peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Four chocolate and peanut butter kind bars. One sugar cookie. Four squeezable apple sauces. And 20 sour Scandinavian swimmers. My favorite. I'm still, I think she said you got those from Trader Joe's. I still have to make myself a uh, trip to Trader Joe's and find these sour Scandinavian swimmers. Um, and I also, where do you get one sugar cookie, Cynthia? I mean, come on, you, you, one sugar cookie? Get, have a couple more sugar cookies. I think you could you could do it. Uh, what's up next for Cynthia? I would not be surprised to see a rock star mountain bike route fastest known time added to her uh, collection of of rock star trophies or belts. Um, that would be really cool if she could hold all three at the same time. That would be. That would be super cool. Congratulations again, Cynthia. Great job. And uh, can't wait to see what you do next. On a, a different sort of, a, well, let's come full circle on a sad note. Uh, the American cycling community is reeling after the tragic shooting death of Mariah Wilson, affectionately known as Mo. Um, Wilson, an elite racer on the U.S. gravel and mountain biking scene, was shot and killed on the evening of Wednesday, May 11th in Austin, Texas. Wilson was only 25 years old, and she had traveled to Texas to compete in the Gravel Locos race on May 14th. And a police are calling her death a, a homicide, and they have not released further details of the crime. According to the, to the officials, she was shot twice and died at the scene. I, it's it's gut-wrenching. I, I, you know... Enough said. It's a sad story that continues to evolve. I'm sure there's going to be more information that comes out of that. And, you know, I, I just, you know, our hearts go out to her family, her friends, all the people. I know she was close to a lot of people that specialized. Um, I, she just, you know, I did not know her. Um, but from what I've read and from, you know, what, you know, talking to Joey, who had, had kind of knew a little bit about her before um, all this came out, he's, you know, just it's devastating. And I mean, I don't know what we can do anyway. Um, Garmin, in, in some additional news, Garmin has released a new family member to the Varia, Varia radar light and by integrating a camera. The Varia RCT715, that's a mouthful, uh, rear view radar with camera and taillight continuously records your ride. So it's entering into that fly six territory to make a sort of an all in one light, you know, uh, camera, but obviously their really cool thing is the radar component of it. Um, it detects via detects vehicles approaching from your behind and displays their status on your compatible Garmin device. And the radar can actually detect traffic behind you at around 150 yards. That's that's a football field and a half. That's that's a long ways. The uh, my only like downside that I see to it is the video video is only 1080 30. So uh, I'd I'd much rather see that 1080 60 or maybe even 2K. I think is not too much to ask for in today's marketplace. Um, especially since the fact that it has the capability to only record video when the radar detects activity. I don't know why we couldn't go ahead and bump that up to 2K 60 frames to give you a much larger, clearer picture to represent what's going on behind you. It, it does have some really cool uh, features like a the different modes that it has. It has a Peloton mode where the light is dimmed and it, it doesn't, you know, like blind somebody behind you on a group ride. Um, reported battery life is four hours with a solid or night flash, five hours in that Peloton mode, six hours day flash. And those were all with the 1080p recording, but I didn't, they didn't, denote whether that battery life with the rec video recording was with the mode set to continually record or radar detect record. But either way, 
that's a pretty pretty strong case um, at three hundred ninety nine bucks. That that's that's that, that's actually something that you, you really got to think about. I'm a a Fly Six user and a Fly Twelve user, and I believe that uh, if we all started running cameras in environments when we had to interact with cars, that cars may begin to act differently towards us if they know that that's going to happen. So I, I'd love to see I'd love to see the price come down so that everybody could actually jump on board. But I get it; that's a lot of technology with radar, a camera, and a light going on in one unit. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that, how that holds up over time. But you talk to anybody that runs the, the Varia radar and they swear by it. And I'd never really looked into it until this came out and I was doing a little bit of homework on this, this unit. I was looking at the app and the app. Now, granted, you'd have to have your phone running on your bars to see the, the another something you'd be looking at to be distracted. But there's a lot of information that that records with regards to the status of cars, how fast they're approaching. And I think a lot of that is even communicated into your head unit if it's a Garmin head unit in addition to the app. So definitely something that I, I think is worth taking a look at if you don't already have a solution in place. And it is definitely a solution when I have to replace what's going on with a, with a rear light. I'm definitely going to be looking in this direction. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Gravel Worlds quickly approaching or finalizing some plans for our GTD Gravel Worlds adventure in Nebraska in August. It's going to be a full week of fun. If you're going to be there, let us know. I'd love to actually, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about if there's enough GTD people are going to be out there, listeners or people that are out there that listen, I'd love to actually do a little uh, GTD get together. We're going to, we're going to be there the whole week. Um, this is going to be my first sort of big Midwest gravel event after a fall start with Mid-South that got pulled due to COVID. I'm really excited about this. I've got the full 150 in my sights and we have a group. Jess is going, Nadine, Amanda, and Larry were all headed out West and uh, I had a, a little care package show up from uh, Gravel Worlds just a couple of days ago. Apparently, I won a raffle drawing and a super cool little hat showed up. We've, we've been all about the hats over here lately. I've got more hats than I know what to do with. Um, we just got all these the new GTD hats that are floating around. And, you know, I got that cool Croatan Buck 50 long weekend finisher hat. And I don't know, hats are the thing right now. So... Uh, it was kind of fun. I actually texted Jason and I said, Hey, uh, what's this for? And he's like, I have no idea where it came from. He didn't even realize I'd won some sort of a raffle. So that's cool. Now listen, this is a super short episode this week. And, uh, I want to thank everybody for listening on a side note for next week's episode. I'm going to be on the road leading a couple of adventure cycling tours on the great Allegheny passage. And at this point, Talked with Joey earlier tonight. We did a bike packing seminar at the bike shop. And uh, uh, we were talking about what we were going to do for this next week. And I think he's going to, uh, him and Jess are going to try to do like a, a, a twofer uh, without me on the on the mic. So we'll see how that goes. I know he's he's pulled that off in the past before. So I'm, I'm curious to see what that's going to do. Uh, thanks everybody. I have Joey. I have all the confidence in the world, all the confidence in the world that you can pull this off. Jess, I'm not so sure, but Joey, I know you can pull this off. <laughs> thanks everybody for listening to this episode of mid Atlantic gravel travel and dirt. And as always a thank you to our episode sponsor, cutaway USA, visit their website at cutawayusa.com and use the code GTD 20 to take 20% off your order. If you enjoyed the podcast, and you would like to consider joining our Patreon family, you can find all of the information on how to do that on our website at graveltraveldirt.com. Check us out on Instagram at midAtlanticGTD. Midatlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt is recorded this week from right here in the little back room on my house overlooking St. Leonard Creek, where we used to do all the virtual things when COVID was really bad. Thanks for riding along. Until next time, do good. Be nice. Go slow. Respect others. Love you. Bye.